that no living organism including this tree can grow in isolation every organism is surrounded by a host of abiotic and biotic components of the environment with which it continuously interacts for example this tree is influenced by a number of abiotic components such as temperature water light soil and wind to name only a few on the other hand different biotic components such as pathogens parasites predators and competitors of this tree also play an important role in its survival just like this tree we too are constantly interacting with our environment did you know that the study of an organism and its environment is the traditional definition of ecology although various ecologists define it differently ecology invariably studies the interactions among organisms and between the organism and its abiotic environment it is studied at four levels of biological organization interestingly the abiotic environment never remains constant all year round all places on earth experience different seasons due to the tilt in the earth's axis and its revolution around the sun owing to the varying intensity and duration of solar heat you find variations in temperature and precipitation at different places on the earth annual variations in temperature and precipitation are responsible for the formation of major biomes such as deserts rainforests and the tundra if you carefully study biome distribution you will notice that the mean annual temperature and precipitation is less in the tundra region compared to deserts precipitation is better in grasslands although temperatures may sometimes be a little higher the rainforests experience good rainfall throughout the year though temperatures in the tropical rainforests are relatively higher than those in coniferous and temperate forests due to their proximity to the equator the climate in the rainforests is so amicable that they are inhabited by nearly 40 to 75% of the world's species it is believed that many new species of flora and fauna are yet to be explored in these rainforests in india too we find major biomes such as deserts tropical rainforests deciduous forests and coasts apart from climatic changes each biome is also affected by local and regional variations which have resulted in the formation of a wide range of habitats some of these habitats are favorable while others are harsh the valley of flowers in uttaranchal and the hilly regions of north northeast and south india are some favorable habitats found in india while some harsh habitats include the scorching rajasthan desert perpetually rain soaked meghalayan forests permafrost regions in the himalayas mountain tops boiling thermal springs in uttaranchal and sikkim and deep ocean trenches in the indian ocean life exists in all these habitats regardless of whether they are favorable or harsh 
The difference in chemical and physical conditions of these habitats is due to the variation in abiotic factors such as temperature, water, light, and soil. Apart from interacting with abiotic factors, the organisms also interact with the other living organisms in their habitats, such as pathogens, competitors, parasites, and predators. This is the reason why organisms differ from habitat to habitat. For example, the plants and animals in the Rajasthan desert are different from those in the Meghalayan rainforest. It is assumed that organisms have evolved or modified themselves over time through natural selection to survive and reproduce in their respective habitats. For instance, desert plants have developed special mechanisms such as spongy stems which aid in storing water. The leaves too are reduced to tiny pointed spines which decrease the loss of water due to transpiration. Likewise, the camel has adapted itself to survive without water for up to 10 days at a stretch. On the other hand, plants growing in rainforests have developed special mechanisms such as leaves with drip tips and thick waxy surfaces which allow water to run off. Moreover, some climbers grow on tall plants to receive sunlight. In this way, every organism slowly adapts to the physico-chemical conditions of its habitat as well as its biotic components to survive and reproduce.